If you'll recall, several months ago, we visited my friend Anthony's shop and set up his laser cutter. At the end of the video, we were cutting this piece of acrylic out. I mentioned at the time that it was for a project I was going to do in the future. Well, my friends, the future is now. Let's do that project. As I peel away the protective paper on the acrylic, you can see we cut out the Tennessee Tinkerer logo. I cut this out in both red acrylic and also in blue acrylic. It's the exact same cutout. The thought is, I'm going to take the red pieces that need to be red and the blue pieces that need to be blue, assemble them together like a puzzle on top of an opaque piece for the white, and backlight it and make a sign. To get started making this acrylic sandwich, I'm going to cut the 1 8 inch acrylic clear piece that goes on the very outside layer of it. Now I'm cutting a piece of quarter inch acrylic that will go on the very inside layer of it. This quarter inch acrylic is the piece that we will make opaque. And we do that by taking the random orbital sander and just sanding both sides of it. To bond all the layers together, we're using this very fast set clear acrylic glue applied with this bottle with a very fine needle. The key to gluing acrylic is to get your piece centered where you want it on the other piece and then squirt the acrylic glue down the edge. It sucks it under in between the layers and it bonds them. It works much like PVC glue in the fact that it melts both surfaces and makes them into one. The difference is it's very, very thin like water. A friend warned me that if there were any parts in between the layers that the glue didn't reach, after it dried, it would look like water spots. I learned this the hard way. My pieces were so big, the glue didn't suck all the way under and coat completely between the layers. Because of this, when you turn it over, it looks kind of splotchy. I was kind of bummed about that. But it turns out when I backlit it later, that you can't see those spots. I started using as much glue as possible hoping that it would suck all the way under every piece. And for the most part, it did. These were the most tedious parts. I had to use tweezers to get everything placed just right before squirting the glue on. Now we need to make a frame and a box to hold the sign. I keep a stack of old picture frames around the shop just for instances like this. I found one that was a little bigger than I needed and I'm prying off the inner decorative ring of it. Now with my miter saw, I'm cutting it apart and resizing it to fit my sign. This frame is not perfect. I'm pretty sure it's an antique. It's got some parts that are kind of boogered up and everything, but once it's painted, I think it's gonna look pretty good. It'll look like it's got a little age to it. I've set up stop blocks so that I get the pieces cut exactly the same. Now with a little glue and some brads, I'm assembling the frame. To make the light box portion of the sign, I'm just using some scrap birch plywood and ripping it to width for the sides and the top. After getting our pieces ripped, we take it over to the miter saw and cut them to length. Once again, we're using stops to make sure everything is cut to the exact same length. After a little light sanding to get all the splinters off, 
we're going to glue and brad everything together. Next we want to adhere the frame to the box. I'm running a bead of glue around the edges of the frame. Now I'm going to line the box up and get it roughly where it needs to be. Before we clamp it fully, we've got to make sure that the box is square. So I'm just loosely adding the clamps. And then to make sure it's square, we measure the diagonals. When they read the same, you know it's square. Now we tighten the clamps. And I'm adding more clamps around the perimeter so that we make sure there's a good bond. And then this needs to set for several hours. And through the magic of video, that several hours is up and we can unclamp everything. We're going to fill all the nail holes in the box with some lightweight spackle. Again, like I always do, I'm just using my finger to put it in the holes. And now the whole thing gets several coats of white spray paint. Well, the paint has dried overnight and it's time for a little assembly. First, our acrylic sandwich drops in, followed by the opaque piece on the very back. And then we'll use some poplar cleats just to hold everything in. And now we get our first look at how it's coming together. We need to make a back for this thing. I've drilled a hole in the center of the top so we can have something to hang it by. I'm gonna pre-drill and screw through the top and through the bottom to hold the back on. That way you don't see the screws when you're looking at it from the side. Now it's time to backlight this. The best way is with LED lights. Now there's several ways you can go about using LEDs. You can buy strip lights, you can buy ribbon LEDs and, or rope LEDs. All these things are nice and they would work perfect, but they cost a lot of money. I decided to do a more conventional backlighting method. I just got four standard screw type base sockets. And for my light bulbs, I just bought new LED style screw in light bulbs. All told, I have about $34 in the lighting. And I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. While we're on the subject of cool lighted signs, I'd like to give a shout out and a big thanks to my buddy over at Bravo Technologies. He made me this awesome edge lit LED sign with my logo on it. He sells these on his website at techbravo.net slash lamps. These are about six to seven inches overall height and the base has 10 LEDs that change through seven color combinations in two different speed modes. Or if you like, you can just set it to stay on one single color. The power source is three AA batteries, or you can plug it in with the USB cord, and the USB cord is included. Make sure you go check out his YouTube channel, Bravo Technologies, and go on his website and order a lamp for yourself. They're very affordable. 
I'll put a link in the description of this video below. Before we end the video, let's take one more look at our sign. I think it turned out really nice. The red and the blue acrylic really pop when you backlight them. And remember the white? That's just that clear acrylic that we sanded. Well I've got to say I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's been a long time in the making, having cut it out several months ago on the laser, but it's finally done now. I'll just have to find a wall to hang it on. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And don't forget to go check out my buddy's YouTube channel over at Bravo Technologies. I'll see you next time. And as usual, thanks for watching.